Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Crushing Serpents podcast, Uniformity Through St. Joseph. And we are here for episode four, and you're here with Conrad, Gabriel, and Alfonso. Let's open up today's episode with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, cast your solemn gaze upon the devil and his minions, and protect us with your mighty staff. You fled through the night to avoid the devil's wicked designs. Now with the power of God, smite the demons as they flee from you. Grant special protection, we pray, for children, fathers, families, and the dying. By God's grace, no demon dares approach while you are near. So we beg of you, always be near to us. Amen. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. So welcome, everybody. We've got, we've got uh, quite a bit of good content, I think, in store today. We're going to be finishing up, uh, wrapping up some of what we were talking about last week regarding artificiality. Wrapping and then, up, not rolling up. let's just move on yeah we're going to be wrapping up uh some of the artificiality and and we're going to be talking about uh emasculation and men in the in modern culture but before we get into that conrad has got a special announcement for us thank you very much gabriel um so i just want to talk about last week's episode so we did have a couple of technical difficulties with the microphones um however we are in the process of upgrading our equipment um, everything is that, uh, with music equipment and just overall recording equipment, uh, it does cost a bit of money. Um, so if you'd like to support our podcast and, and, and support our efforts in improving the, the overall sound quality of these episodes, um, there's a link below in the description, uh, for, uh, for a GoFundMe page. Um, we'd be happy, um, you know, donate as little as, 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 as much as you, as you would like. Um, just know that everything that you do donate will be going towards improving, the quality of these of, of these of the show and we'll be going towards sound equipment um so yeah uh greatly appreciate it um likewise next week we will be taking a break uh so there will be no episode released on the 17th but on the 24th so look forward to that all right thanks and uh for all those that are kind enough to uh, donate in cash uh, we'll be putting it in the freezer you guys know why 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 <laughs> Because we want cold, hard cash. What up? <laughs> Bump. There we go. That was not funny. <laughs> that was not. <laughs> I try. I try. I try to keep them, you know, pretty cool jokes. But uh, I think this is why we're losing subscribers and record numbers. <laughs> <laughs> From it's, one to zero, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's a record. That we're 100% down. Actually, we may have negative subscribers. People are trying to Might ban us get and canceled us already. Yeah. Yep. So um, let's. I think we should. We should. Where did we leave off last week? It was such a long time ago. We uh, so we were talking about uh, G.K. Chesterton, right? And uh, beer. Um, so I'll just I'll just I'll just go over the the quote again. So Mr. Good old uh, Chesterton said, uh, "Drink because you're happy, but never because you're miserable. Uh, never drink because you're wretched without it, or you will be like the gray faced gin- drinker in the slum." But drink because you'll be happy without it, and you will be like the laughing peasant of Italy. Never drink because you need it, for this is the rational drinking and the way to death and hell. But drink because you do not need it, for this is irrational drinking and the ancient health of the world. Well, speaking of that, um, do you guys know why you should hold the door open for a clown? Why? It'd be a nice gesture. <laughs> Alfonso's got his book of dad jokes. I'm with them. I'm, I'm gonna set out on that. I don't think anybody's feeling it today. Anyways, I'll actually get to the the real meat here. So, uh, Connor and Gabe, uh, please continue. Please continue. Well, no, it's just we, we were. I I still can't remember content wise where we were, but I remember we were having some good discussion about just the artificiality in our culture. Um how it's how it's sort of seeped into all elements of, of living and it was actually really neat because uh, we were we were doing our a zoom class yesterday it was an environmental science one and our professor was going on and on about um home economics and things uh, like passing on crucial skills uh, from parents to children and so on and so forth and how and how um culture is sort of founded on those sorts of things and it was really neat conrad i don't know if you remember but he was talking about I think Jos- Josiah Wedgworth or Wads or something. I don't know, but he was some crucial guy in the Industrial Revolution. And what our professor was saying was that um, in terms of mass production and stuff, this guy, Josiah, was like, 
oh, you know what's really an impediment to people producing things uh, in, in, in higher quantities is these sorts of skills that they learn at home because that conflicts with the, with the factory methods and so on and so forth. And so he was talking about how can we teach people to unlearn these types of skills. And so what our professor was saying was like, how dangerous is that? You're teaching people how to, how to forget about things like sewing, um, farming, you know, like all of, the, all of these. He, he, was, he was calling it like the agrarian lifestyle. And you're losing track of all of these sorts of important skills just so that you can learn how to mass produce. And so he was talking about how that affects culture. It's like, well, now you don't have people with chickens in their backyard and gardening and doing all these sorts of things. Now people are people are so centered around industrial life. And it's just interesting to see how that's affected society. And so basically what his um, his because he, he's not he's not anti industrial um corporations and things like that but he thinks he thinks that there's a place for them but they have to be complementary to like the family unit and to because yeah just to right yeah because agrarian lifestyle and stuff. yeah the more you lose those uh or i guess the the consequent of the uh consequences of the industrial revolution is that you lost those family skills that people had right. for generations and these kind of interesting ways of of um farming or styles of of of, of farming and getting getting things prepared that kind of pass down through generations. And once you stop, like once you stop that, um, um, I don't know you would, what, you, what you would call it, but I guess just the passing down. Just these home skills. Yeah, yeah the know? passing down of home skills yeah. and how how much that affects people. Like, like I guess even with, um, like like with, with Stalin in the in the Soviet Union, when, when he was implementing his five-year plan, you know, he completely, you know, destroyed farming. I mean, he, he kind of implemented his own, his own, um, his own uh, way of, of, of farming and kind of forcing people and, and kind of breaking up families and, and, and kind of destroying these, these home skills and, and destroying these, these, these skills that, that people weren't able to pass on to their children because of just how corrupt the communist um, agenda was back then in, or, in order to like really force, force farm all these, all these um, um, to really, to really force the farming system in order to to make up for for what Russia lost, and and you know be able to have an, an industrial revolution in such a such a corrupt way, but you know what I mean. It sort of dissolves culture when you see that people like what we were talking about last week. It's a lot easier to work for things when you love them, and yet when when that sort of culture is removed, it makes it. I don't know. It's like you're living to work, so to speak. You're living to get up, go to the factory, and mass produce, whereas it used to be that people would work for, with their family, work to produce things for their family, maybe sell and trade with their friends and neighbors and things like that. But that was it, it was it was a lot simpler. It wasn't like it wasn't like oh, wake up, go to work, go you know, and and that was the cycle. It repeated itself over and over and over again. I mean, there was still that working element, but it was a lot better because you got to see the fruits of your own labor in your house. You got to pass it down to your 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 family and it was more it seemed i don't know i guess i wasn't there so what, what do i know about that but it seemed a lot more joyful I, i'd imagine you know just sharing in in that sort of thing with your family I right know. yeah and, and it just like ties ties together the the family union and the domestic church you know, right a lot of people did these with their with their parishes and and and, and whatnot um yeah. right but and, and alfonso last week you were talking a lot about sort of like the artificial um well i guess that was that was sort of the topic of last week, so we were all talking about that. But how? So how do you think leaving, or sorry, leaving behind these sort of agrarian skills has played into um, played into the perpetuating of the of like industrialism and losing out on these important life skills? Well, flesh that out a bit more for me. Flesh it out a bit. Sure. So I think as as society has begun to cling more and more to um, mass production of of as you're talking about, let's say, bread, wine, you know, all these sorts of things that people used to be doing at a more, not, yeah, at a more individual level, you know, now it's sort of, now they've become these large corporate entities, not to say that that's always bad, but pe but you leave, uh, you, you sort of lose out a more personal element because of that. So how can we get back to that? Um, and what do you think the process was of, of um, losing out on these sorts of things? Well, it's funny because um, connecting some of the things you guys had talked about before, and I was just trying to find the quote now. It was when C.S. Lewis, it, it could have been him, could have been someone else, um, had this quote about 
the old education was men men passing manhood on to you know the next generation of men right and that that key aspect of masculinity emphasizing that very beautiful versus new education is just indoctrination and we see that with the school systems we see that with this communist mentality um and you guys talked about like that was excellent actually hearing about uh you know the professor emphasizing how there was that need to attack the family attack homesteading attack you know very agrarian um well-versed well-skilled society to make them mindless robots right a lot more detached you know it's hard to love things when you're not working for them and that's exactly and i was thinking about um small towns now especially how lots of them have moved away from agriculture and now people don't have anything to do so they're just like mind numb bored in small towns and then you have all this drug use and it's it's just so prevalent drug use is escapism and on top of that, people aren't working towards anything. They don't have these visions. They're just like trapped in virtual reality once again. And so there's that failure of men to pass on manhood to their sons because, you know, men aren't saying, hey, let's go build a shed together. Let's go uh, have some bees together. Let's go garden, you know. Um, like it was funny too, going out cross-country skiing. We didn't see any kids out. You know, kids could be playing around outside, enjoying outdoors or working on things with their families, but you don't see that. And it's right. so sad. You see them playing Fortnite. And stuff so you can hang out with them that way if you really want or minecraft it's crazy like we can develop all, like these huge worlds on minecraft and it's exciting right? and you're like oh my goodness we're building such cool things you're doing the exact same things that we're talking about only virtually yeah. on minecraft man it's, i mean it, it is exciting but there comes shout a, out to minecraft there, shout out to Mi- there comes a point on minecraft where you get bored or you, you, you get the diamonds and it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> you defeat the dragon actually the dragon's kind of sick though the ender dragon yeah the ender dragon yeah i spent i spent my fair share of uh, <laughs> days playing minecraft but then i i don't know i guess i could say I blocked it from oh. memory oh, my <laughs> that was a crafty joke bro <laughs> i i think the problem is <laughs> I think the problem is that it is like it is kind of endless eh? no I, i'm pretty sure there's a place called the end there so i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> no <laughs> It never ends, you know. <laughs> uh, it's a whole nother world, but uh, <laughs> no, not reality though. Uh, not virtual reality, here, but reality, reality. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this episode is just a complete joke, by the way. Like, <laughs> just click off now. <laughs> At my life, but uh, no. In all seriousness, though, I think you hit the key point, Conrad. It does get tiring and boring and uh, that's why you need a new fix of a new video game or some new server or something um, to keep you stimulated but if you had guys getting out and I, we've emphasized video games and their problems and I, I don't know why it just keeps coming up but I think it's more just the idea of getting back to the incarnation getting back to that love of the world and that professor that you guys have I had him last year he's amazing you know talks about rerum novarum and the holy father's uh, calls for getting back to the land taking private property taking pride in your work um the fruit of our labors you know sharing with people and so i think the fact that we're just talking about this and discussing it and then little by little acquiring new skills for ourselves and passing it on to our friends and families that's a little step forward you know to counteracting this huge globalist culture Mm -hmm. that destroys mom and pop local stuff that destroys local cultures you know it's mass produced mass media everything but we'll have things to sing and dance and share together when we start making things ourselves based on what we got around us with God's creation. Right. Now, so in, in line with that then, um, talking about like globalism and, and, and industrialization and things like that, with with the increase of sort of artificial products, how, what do you guys think about the effects that that's had on the family? In particular, like we, we've noticed, I think all of us have noticed sort of the absence of strong, I guess a strong male presence in, in, in the household. I think part of it has to do with, oh, you're losing these skills. Nowadays, uh, I think, well, not all, but some, I think a lot of families where the fathers are present, they're not able to pass on these skills because they don't have them. They've lost out. And so to, um, so to incorporating things like drug use and, and sort of like the escapist culture, not focusing on good elements. What do you guys think about fatherhood today? Um, how, can we, how can we get it back to where it ought to be? you think and what do you think about like how emasculated people have become men i guess men have become that's that's a loaded question that's uh, yeah <laughs> pack a punch. that's pack a punch <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there we go i don't know man it's uh <laughs> cod players be like Woo! 
That's an never that's played college. <laughs> man, that's a that's an age old question. Kind of as how how the church is a million years old and everything. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We never no. added that out there. We kept that in. No, no, I take that back. Slip of the tongue. <laughs> I think it's about <laughs> a thousand years, a thousand years. Or like a billion years, I think, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Um Hi, bro. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's that's a crazy question, Gabe. Um <laughs> because kind of bouncing off of what you were saying, Alphonse, last week, like it, it's there's been a multi-prong attack on masculinity and on just these, like not only just skills, but you know, these ideas of, you know, what does it mean to be a man? And we've kind of lost this. We, we've, we've kind of lost it. It's been, it's been kind of perverted throughout the, throughout the years. Um, especially like from, I don't know, like the, like the sixties onwards, like when you have the spike the, of the sexual revolution, women's revolution, all these different things that, that came out. And I think, a lot of it ties into, I mean, a lot of it does tie into, into sex and to, to, you know, just like sh- sexuality and, and whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but, and, and, um, what, what it means to be a man and a woman and man, you could just like dive into just theology of the body for days on this. I like, I don't know if we can, if we, we can get through it all, but if, if I may add anything on, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty firm believer of, um, the strong negative effect that pornography and the porn industry has had, not only on cultures, relationships, love you too, Alfonso, um, but uh, <laughs> but how it's it's just weakened men to a point where like we can't even have not only control of ourselves, but but just that 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 authority, the chastity, that mm. that, that ability to to be who God calls us to be, not be trapped by by satan's lies right. satan's temptations and, and and so on right and, and speaking of being um we should throw in that birds and the bees part you know that uh you kind of mentioned there and it's funny so many priests and so many uh speakers on chastity and the, the chastity movements that we've had develop in the church of the apostolates like chastity project with jason everett which if uh you're not familiar with i definitely recommend getting into some of his videos reading books was going this the online. book that, that we were reading the other like a month ago that he was he was talking about um oh, you're yeah, not yeah. supposed to meet his spouse oh, online yeah. yeah we were we were uh we were all what is that what is that all about i think minecraft and <laughs> roblox are the perfect <laughs> yeah it was, it was about, like a while a while ago we, we there was we just so happened to stumble upon four copies of how to, <laughs> how to find your soulmate without losing your soul by jason everett we were just looking over like the different parts and one was I think one of the points was like these are the ten no goes. Like if you if 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 your <laughs> if your boyfriend has any of these then you gotta dump him right away. And one right, of them is yeah, like yeah. if he asks you over over email or something, or not email if right. I guess this is written back in like two thousand four, but if if he asks you online rather than in person. If I if I can't meet my wife on Fortnite, <laughs> I'm just gonna be single my entire life, I guess. <laughs> in self. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, so connecting these things then, um, it's funny because how do we fight pornography and lust? Like, how do we give men not repression, right? Which is what the culture has fought against. Like, that's why the sexual revolution came about because the puritanical, you know, um, talk about sex is dirty, sex is evil, sex is bad, you know, but you kind of got to do it. It's the same thing as alcohol we talked about. It wasn't something valued as good. And yet we still tolerate it. So there's an internal conflict in people, yeah. right? So this suppressing of these natural healthy desires and not understanding what they're for, not understanding the gift of the human person and what it means to give oneself, you know, whether it be consecrated, whether it be in marriage. And so I think um, as the church has responded to it, thanks be to God for St. Um, Pope Paul VI with his Humani Vitae or St. John Paul II, Theology of the Body, and all the apostles have come forth from this because so many people have emphasized to young men, we have been given such energy, such strength, and this great power is, I think Jason never uses this analogy, so I'm just kind of going to mess it up here, as I always do, but it's kind of like a raging river. There's so much power in the current, you know, so much strength, so much force. And so if you put in safeguards, if you put in, you know, barriers, right, like dirt around to channel it in, then you're going to have a raging river. It's going to be directed towards something and it's going to go. But if you don't have those safeguards in, kind of like, you know, protecting chastity, protecting your purity, then what's going to happen is that energy is going to be a swamp. You're just going to drain it out, waste it, and then what happens? Boom. 
swamp stagnant. Land, it's stagnant and it's gross and it's disgusting and it's useless. So by channeling that energy, that's essential for developing masculinity, getting men to build those habits of self-discipline, self-mastery. That's what we're doing next to this 90, right? And so with that, um, it, it develops that raging river of the gift of life, right? The river of life in our souls. But let's make that concrete now. Let's take that from the abstract and, you know, incarnational, make it right. incarnational. So that's where the homesteading movement or mm. fathers bring their sons and say, okay, look, you know what? It's okay to have uh, all this energy and let's direct that. Let's go build stuff. Let's mm-hmm. go run. Let's go on hikes. Let's do sports. Let's build stuff. To get anything you can do to get that energy, but not be destructive, not be violent, right? Unless, you know, it's necessary and you're in the military or something, but be creative. Men being creators. That's one thing we have not emphasized enough. God's creative gift. That's Minecraft, what the sexuality is for too. No, but it's true. Like men want to build beautiful things. We want to paint beautiful arts. We want to write songs, make movies. We want to make candles and cook food for people. We want to, uh, you know, even making children, right? The the thing that you're not I, just... I really want to make a candle, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you said candle there. <laughs> uh <laughs> but no, the, the idea of the gift of self, right? It It's true love. Love gives and gives and gives until it overflows, right? And so we see that in the married life. You know, we've been blessed with our families, right? Your parents love each other so much that God's grace is working through them. And this love overflows into the children. Right. The children are like the cup that overflows in Psalm 23. You know, David talks about um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, right? That, that visual idea of children are the cups that have, are receiving the overflow, right? And so it's wonderful, this idea. And so too, if you're called to be religious, connecting this birds and the bees thing, right? This is what triggered me here, was we just uh, had candle mass, February 2nd, right? The Feast of Candle Mass, which is the purification of Our Lady in the right at 40 days after the birth of our Lord, and then his presentation in the temple, the baby Jesus was presented. And so this beautiful feast day is also what the church has as the feast for consecrated religious life. For those that give themselves as a pure sacrifice, as holy victims. And so the candles, very beautiful spiritual analogy for virginity, for giving oneself consecrated, for also burning oneself out as a martyr, a perfect sacrifice, total gift of self, because as the pure beeswax candle burns out, you know, it's totally consumed in the gift of love, the fire of the Holy Spirit. So these analogies and these these very physical things, the symbolism that God builds into them and that we draw from the liturgy, that sits in our imagination and then carries out into how we live our lives. Everything is so interconnected that it sanctifies us. And that's why, you know, the beekeeping talk from last time and homesteading and alcohol, all these things, you see how interconnected they are and it's awesome, right? And this gift of self and love and theology of the body and religious life, God has made everything so good and it's wonderful that, you know, we're rekindling this, right? No pun intended with the candles there, but... Uh. <laughs> so I, I have a question, Alfonso. So do you, do you remember which pope it was who instituted like the St. Michael's Prayer after after Mass? I think it was Pope Leo the 8th the 13th. And he, he, he overheard uh, Satan yeah, and... talking about the attack on the church. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's interesting in line with this topic. I feel like the, the attack... I don't know. I don't know where it began, but I think definitely it's it's we can see it in the domestic church too. Um, how the father is supposed to be the head of uh, sort of the the priestly figure in the household, and how that's been attacked. Where where, where are you at? Like, you know, like where where is the father now? And it seems like in line with what you're saying, Conrad, the sexual revolution. Sex has been it's been something that the. Uh, Viewing it as something as a as a sacramental object, something that uh, is supposed to be within the confines of marriage, and 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 just reducing it to sort of this commodity, you know. Now there's there's really no value to it except for the I guess the unitive element, which even then becomes so diluted when it's not in its proper context, and so because of that, when you start to devalue all these sorts of important things, and you start to view uh, two two increment uh like huge components being the mother and the father the man and the wife in 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 marriage and in sex it's like well it doesn't really work the same you know um you you sort of reduce that bond you say well no you don't have to be married anybody can do it anybody can do it and because of that there there are no obligations there's no there's nothing compelling uh the man to stick around after and that's what we've seen that's how we've seen sort of culture degenerate well you get somebody pregnant. It's like, 
all right, I'm head out <laughs> type thing, like unlucky, I guess, you know, but it's like, that's not how things are supposed to be. And so in line with like that, that attack on the church, who do you attack first? Again, strike the shepherd and the flock shall scatter. And that's what's happened. And you, you, you attack the domestic church and then you start to lose again, like the, the types of skills that we're talking about, like the homesteading and Alfonso and his beeswax. So well, well you, you start to lose those types of skills too. So, I don't know. I think it's just interesting to to sort of track linearly the the sort of I don't want to say progression because it's definitely not progressing right, towards yeah. anything good. But what what do you call it? Uh, digression. Yeah, digression. Yeah, digression. Thanks. Degeneration. I guess there are a lot of good words for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it comes it comes back to that idea that you know the fa- the family is the primary society, and you destroy the family, you destroy the society. You know, there's that, and I think there's <laughs> begs the question, you know, how do we come here? Where do we go from here? How do I think the how do we come here question is is a really fun one to talk about, <laughs> just because looking at where it's come from, and 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 especially, so I I don't know. Throughout the Bible, we see Satan attacks women, particularly. He tries to distort femininity because you can do that and then things things seemingly fall apart. And so we tell women, well, maybe raising a family is a bad thing. Especially now, culturally, it's like you look at it, oh, being a stay-at-home mom, dude, like, what are you doing? You know, that's not, it's like, no, it's a, it's, it's, it's a greater, I think it's a greater job. It's a greater, uh, it, uh, like, it's, it's a higher end than going out to work because all, all actions between like all actions when you're when you're a husband and wife and you have a family are on account of your family and so the mother staying around to raise her kids it's 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 more important than the father going out to work because all things that he's seeking to gain from that work is on account of his family is so that he can provide and and do all these sorts of things but now but now the it, it's i don't know it's just so poisonous telling people telling women especially oh well it's not that important you know there's no different there're no differences between men and women we're all the same, and and I think it's just, it's just in, intoxicated, our culture, and it's it's really I think, um, been a catalyst for sort of removing, um, sort of like in line with the sexual revolution too, removing any sort of um, bond between men and women, and removing any sort of obligations and and things like that. I don't know. It's just people people are against gender roles, but uh, I don't. <laughs> I think that they might be a bit, uh, a bit better than we give them credit for. Well, one thing I, I really loved is on that. I think that's such a controversial endpoint you left off with there, but it can definitely be fleshed out more, contextualized. Um, Father Chad Ripperger uh, of the FSSP, he might have just founded a new religious community. I haven't kept up to date with his uh, vocational journey and his ministries, but. Uh, he was a major exorcist. He's a PhD in psychology. I've mentioned him on the podcast before. And he did an amazing talk. He gave a homily about masculinity, fatherhood, um, men and women, how they interact. And he said, you know what? Oftentimes we get caught up, uh, especially in traditional circles, quote unquote, um, over what a man and woman should do. But he said, looking at the role of fatherhood and the role of him being the head of the family, right? Pater familias. It's essential that the man actually has responsibility and authority over all things, and he delegates certain tasks to his handmaid, to his helper, to his Eve, right? He is the Adam, and he needs an Eve to help him. So that means, yes, a woman has jobs that she will be more uh, fit to take on. You know, like right. women are naturally more empathetic because they're better child rearers in that respect. That's why they're given such great graces, you know, on a natural level, different than a man, right? They, they complement each other. And so man naturally will delegate certain things to his wife. But at the same time, actually, it's a bigger sacrifice. He emphasizes it was really refreshing when he said no. So a woman, yes, she's probably going to be better at the emotional empath- empathy part with children and has all these other skill sets. But at the same time, you still have to change the diapers. You still have to be there for the kids. You still have to cook. You still have to clean. Everything your wife is going to do, you have to do too. And you know what? You guys work that out, obviously, within the relationship. But don't think that it's just she does these things and you do these things. It's you're responsible for her salvation, yours, the whole family's. So you need to be able to do everything too, right? So many men, they just, you know, wash their hands clean and run away. And they're like, right. okay, women's job, you know? Right, right. Which 
it's good to have that healthy distinction. I think to have complementary roles and to appreciate them, to emphasize them, but also to not shirk our responsibilities as right. men too. So let's say, Alfonso, you're talking to somebody, um, I, I think somebody, your average woman, let's say these days, you tell them these sorts of things and they're like, what are you talking about? You know, it's, it's I think a lot of them find it insulting, at least that I've spoken to. It's like, why are you mansplaining? Y- yeah. Like I have to stay home and take care of the kid. You know what? What would you how would you respond to that? Uh, what I love about these questions is they're always so pack a bunch. They're always so loaded, honestly, because they, they tie in so many things. And the first thing that came to mind was Cardinal Newman. Um, St. John Paul II was influenced by him because of the fact that Cardinal Newman, St. Cardinal Newman, had this very, um, he had a huge emphasis on personalism. Once again, loving the individual human person before you and being their friend and ensuring that you understood where they're coming from. And so this, you know, cor ad cor loquitur, his motto is Cardinal, heart speaks to heart. That requires deep empathy. That requires listening, right? Um, you know, this is this word has definitely been overused so much in the church, and it's almost heretical <laughs> sometimes, uh, or actually it is uh, used by heretics. But when used properly, the true word of dialogue, of having a discussion like this and talking to someone and seeing where they're coming from is so important because so many young women nowadays with our um, sexualized culture, hypersexualized culture, they've been raped. Like, I don't want to get into the politics of the, the rape culture and the hashtag Me Too because that's very controversial. And... The media doesn't do things justice. The media exaggerates things every which way and plays people against each other. But I do generally see both sides in that we have not taught men, because of the attack on fatherhood, so many young men have grown up without good fathers and they've not known what it means to be a man. And so the culture just says to them, if you can sleep around, you are a man. If you can take advantage you're of a woman. You're a chad. You're a chad, exactly. And then if you do the same thing as a woman, you're a hoe, you're a whore. What's wrong with you? So there's a double standard there. And then women are taken advantage of. Women are, are actually generally being raped. They're preyed on at parties. Uh, drinking, once again, is used as a weapon mm-hmm. to destroy women. This this gift of sex and everything, the gift of self, is under attack every step of the way in music, in movies, at our parties. The very gift of self, the human person, you know, it's, it's so sad. So you understand why the feminist movement has come about because many women are trying to figure out what the heck is the solution. I am a person. I deserve respect. But what does that look like? What should man and woman do to respect each other, understand their complementarity, rather than have this neo-Marxist division? The devil, you know, will divide and conquer, right? So he'll have people pitted against each other. Rather than man and woman complementing each other, it's meninism and feminism, right? Reactionary political movements uh, to combat yeah. the deep to the deep wounds caused by the other. Men and women just prey on each other, take advantage of each other, fighting, and it's just mutual destruction, and it's so sad. And so uh, this is at the macro level. But on the micro level, then, it goes back to your question of, well, if you have someone come up to you, you generally should not just um, throw them some cheap lines. Right. If you can, if you can, right? Because it depends where you are, right? Circumstances. Listen to the person. Listen to their heart. Let them open up so that you can see where they're coming from. And you use words that are tailored towards where they're at in the true sense of you're going to uplift them. You're going to give them the truth. But it needs to be in the way that they're receptive to, knowing mm. their transcendental, their personality type, knowing like that's why understanding true Catholic human psychology, right, or just the human person, understanding all these gifts and you know love languages and like I said the transcendentals and how people communicate, think, and what they're drawn to, these are all gateways into their heart so that you can speak to them on sensitive topics, if especially if they're wounded. If you're talking to a woman that's been raped, or even if she's on contraceptives and it's physiologically changing her, and I think uh, if we can include this, maybe maybe not. Um, you know, a link to Dr. Janice Smith's uh, contraception talk, uh, Lighthouse Catholic Media CD. It's on YouTube too. Amazing. It talks about the hundreds of changes, uh, physiological changes that happens to a woman's body when she takes the contraceptive pills. So literally, it it's so radical. You know, so many women now they're on drugs and it's changing them, even changing your attractions. So women, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Good. Like you, you probably something. know about this, and you guys can jump on too, right? Women, their attractions change. And they noticed this. They did studies before the 60s, before the sexual revolution. Women were attracted to your typical men. Men that looked like fathers, right? Men that were hairier, more macho. And I'm not trying to promote some macho masculine rapist culture here, right? But what I'm saying is, you know, just your general characteristic of a natural man, right? You know, a good provider, protector, and he looks like a man. 
But then after the sexual revolution, because all these women were popping pills, it, it physiologically changes you and they become attracted to more uh, younger feminine, feminine like boys. And so you have the Zac Efron effect, you know, very hairless, scrawny, you know, high pitched. And like I mean, Zac Efron's <laughs> ripped, if we're being honest. No, I meant like back high school musical, you know, <laughs> Troy Bolton, 2007. Days, like, <laughs> and you see what I'm saying, right? Like it, all these boy toy kind of like, ew, like all these like feminized looking ah, men. And they Fem be, boys, if you will. Fem, yeah. <laughs> soy boys, fem boys, the whole shebang, right? But no, generally. Are you saying that women today are more attracted to soy boys? Well, <laughs> So no, what I'm saying is this was a trend that was noticed, right? Sound off in the comments, guys. Somebody. <laughs> <are we? laughs> but I can't. Now, I don't want to generalize. I can't speak as a whole of right now as of 2021. I, I'm not going to make any definitive statement about what women are attracted to, right? I'm no expert. What I'm just saying is these were trends we noticed because of the pill. What that's doing today is a different story. Right now we have the transgender movement. We have people being attracted to anything under the sun. It's like... <laughs> I like I can't. I'm not going to talk about people's attractions. That's their attractions, right? Um, but that's that deserves that actually deserves that deserves um, a full topic because, like a I said, couple episodes because people, yeah, people's hearts and love and the gift of self, sexuality, because of all the wounds and all the attacks by the devil. We need God's grace. We need to be healed, and we need to, to genuinely talk about these things in a beautiful context. We need to talk about it and give it the fair respect it deserves. Right? Yeah. So I'm not just trying to bash on things. I'm also, you know, you joke around, you tease at the absurdity of of the evils we're confronted with, and then also in response, you go hard and you also go with warm, compassionate approaches. You need both hand in hand, right? So right. anything with regards to you know transgender movements and the LGBTQ plus community and all. Uh, these sorts of things. I think maybe we'll have an episode and we'll talk about this and give it some respect and talk about you know genuine concerns, right? right? Um, but we went from contraception. What was what was before that? Because I just gone off. My my initial question was how would you respond to some uh, like your average, I guess, a woman, woman our age today? You know, uh, uh, um, because I don't think like her response presumably would be you'd feel insulted or she'd feel insulted that oh. We're imposing these these old fashioned um, gender role type standards upon her, or at least, well, we're not imposing them, but at least we're suggesting that that's what we return to because that's what the family initially was founded on, and that's really the only way that that it can function properly. Yeah, so that was the initial question, but I think that was a very, I thought it was a very entertaining and good answer. And so, and yeah, and I think too, there's more to it in simple things as, and I, Conrad has some fire ready, ready to go, me. right. But it's just like um, women need to really be loved and respected and they need good men around them to say being a mother is an, um, a noble, amazing sacrifice. It is it, it is far better in many respects if you can be a stay-at-home mom and homeschool or, or raise your kids and it's maybe still work too, but it is far better vocation and, and career you, you could call it if you want than going and becoming some nurse or lawyer or doctor or judge or something and being miserable and regretting the fact that you didn't have kids. If God's calling you to do that, to be a mother, that's the priority. It's not anything else. The man is for the exterior, and he will provide and protect. And for the interior, building up the domestic church, the woman builds a nest, a little nido, right? A home, a warm, loving home. And this is such a special thing that we've not passed on to women. Because you can only, you know, pass on what you've received, right? So if women are no- receiving nothing but, you know, sexual assaults and rapes and gropes, objectification, et cetera, et cetera. Being told that promiscuity is... Is good. Right. And saying right. kids are taken away from their freedom. Mm-hmm. There's no habituation. There's no love developed, no devotion Dude, to the family. Yeah, the, the amount of women that I've heard just, uh, I don't know, sickened by the, the prospect of having kids is just, I don't know, it's 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 kind of disheartening if they're not protected how can their kids be protected mm-hmm. who's going to protect their little young daughter when they as a woman are already being used right right, right. so these genuine fears come out and you understand so that's why i say you have to respond to each person where they're coming from and say well, children aren't a commodity they're a gift from god you aren't a commodity you're a gift from god and you deserve a man that's going to love and protect you and we've got to step up and say women it's an honorable vocation men this is what you got to work towards and that's why even having like a homestead you could say or even having something anything that you work towards together it's it's beautiful. Even if you're in a suburban neighborhood and you have a little garden in the backyard, it's something beautiful. Where true fruit is actually born from this, right? It's a compliment. It gave you guys something to do, right? Because you can't just be a mindless zombie on your cell phone all day and say, "Oh, why aren't I happy?" Right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's more to life. You got to enjoy and 
and you need to know how to love a woman a thousand ways aside from through sex. That's one thing Jason Everett does an awesome job. He says, men, learn to love your girlfriend or your wife in a thousand different ways other than just physically. And that's that's amazing, you know? Because then the adventure of life unfolds and all the, these mysteries and all these adventures, they come about and you go on them. But uh, Conrad, sorry, like I've, I've been holding you back here because I know no, there's, there's uh, stuff waiting. No, 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 that's good. I, I, I love that, Alfonso. Uh, <laughs> I think um, if, if, if I may add to one of the one of the points, though, just this, I, I find that especially as, as men, you know, we like clear, you know, points, ideas, you know, give us, give us what's right, give us what's wrong and let's, 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 let's go forward. But our, our culture has kind of done, done a horrible job doing that, especially with, with regard to the whole, to the whole topic of, of sex and, 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 and so on. And so, yeah, like, like talking about, about, about rapes and, and, and promiscuity and stuff like our, our, our culture is so warped up and, and, and it's like we don't know what's good and we don't know what's not good you know we, we, we grew up thinking oh pornography is a good thing you should do it but also me too bad don't like blah, blah, blah. um like like rape culture pornography like it seems like there's 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 so much discontinuity with it and it's like 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 even back in the day when 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 the whole um the whole times up movement did come about you know it was it was it was genuine it was real but it was so odd at the same time cuz the the a hollywood industry which is so corrupt and and so full of, of pedophiles and 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 weirdos and, and just just people who 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 prey on children and people who prey on 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 young actors and actresses and stuff and the every these people are who 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 struggle and who suffer and you kind of see now like how kind of like you, you, you look back and think, you know, why was that actor so weird, or why did he turn out to be like a heroin addict, or why did he fall down, like why did he commit suicide? It's like, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Um, but then at the same time, you look at that and like everybody was everybody was on board with it and it was like, yeah, yeah, you know, time's up. Like it, it was it was it was so odd because at the same time you have the pornography industry, which is 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 alive and, and is is probably one of the most most um, successful, most popular, like billions of dollars go into the pornography industry. And yet nobody says a, a thing about it. And it's like, so when this whole thing was going on, nobody was talking about the pornography industry. because it's like, oh, you know, the people want to do it. And Matt Frad, he wrote a really, a really good, very intense, very graphic book called The Porn Myth, which goes, goes through all the, the different myths that are brought up about pornography. And read at your own expense. You know, some people would say, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's directed towards a secular audience. So people who are, who, who are exposed to pornography and, and like, just want to know, know that, know the truth behind it. So he does go through a lot of graphic details on what happened to these, to these porn stars and stuff that, 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 that go on. Um, but, but anyways, and I, I could talk more about it, but the point I'm trying to make is that there's that confusion. Like we don't really know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. It feels right. But at the same time, there's that inner, Turmoil, in, in, inner tum- turmoil, and knowledge of like, well, this is, doesn't feel right, but my culture is telling me that it is right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you go into the into into right pop culture and regular culture that that just that that just feeds you the stuff and 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 um, you know that that, it, that explains the confusion am, uh, among what does it really mean to be a man if there's just so much confusion on what's right, what's wrong. Like, can I do this? Can I do that? I can't do this, but I can do that. But I can do that. You know, where, where do we go? Yeah, and one thing I've tried to do too is with language, right? Because with all these neo-Marxist movements, they're always attacking language and how we communicate. So this is just a little thing, and you guys can you know challenge me on this, but I don't even like to use the word porn stars anymore. Like I try to say porn victims because I think it's more pack a punch. I think it's a more powerful. Yeah, term. I like that. I like that because a star is like, oh, it's glamorous, it's it's amazing, but then you hear it, and it's like, no, they're a victim. Uh, just like anyone that consumes, anyone that participates in it, whether you're consuming videos or, or images or whether you're making them, um, yeah, we're all victims of that. You know, anyone that's participating. So right. Anyways, it's just a little. No, I think. Well, I think that's a good point that you you bring it up. And my my initial reaction is that I think calling them a porn victim is is good uh, um, because it's accurate. But there's something about the term porn star I find that just reflects so negatively on on cult on our culture you know like what what as you're saying like last week what we love as a culture is what we value and so when we when we seek to sort of edify 
um, these types of things, it really reflects how, just how far we've degenerated. You know, we glorify promiscuity. We, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, guys go to their guy friends and they, they congratulate them for sleeping with whomever it is, you know, and, and all of these sorts of things. It just shows how how far we've fallen. Uh, well, m- maybe it's not a new, I don't, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that this is new. But nonetheless, I don't know. Grace builds upon nature, and so too does I. Now, this I was actually hoping to bring this up, and this is sort of going off track here, but I think that's fine for a little bit. Was that um, I was talking with one of the, one of the guys in my uh, my dorm like two days ago, and uh, we were talking about like the, the notion that grace builds upon nature. You know, there's there are, there's a lot of good that we naturally have, but God's great. He endows us with more grace, and we build upon it. What do you think? I think that it very it it can work, in uh, in the opposite, and that we're we're fallen, and that there are these natural predispositions that we have that are bad, that are evil. So too with with Satan and and all of his uh, minions and things like that. How do they act on that and bring out the worst in people? And how has that affected culture in so far as it pertains to like masculinity, the family, the feminist movement? You know, all of these sorts of things. I don't know. I think. Just, just as there's grace building upon nature, uh, there's this constant and ever-present force trying to tear down the, a, any grace that we're given. Man, always, always. There's so much there. I love it. And I don't know if we've mentioned um, psychotherapy before, counseling and all that kind of stuff. Do you guys remember if we have? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Because I, I know one time we might have mentioned uh, this beautiful book uh, printed by uh, Ignatius Press. It's by an oratorian father, actually. Um, and it's called Pardon and Peace, A Sinner's Guide to Confession. It has Cardinal Newman um, on the front cover being received by Father Dominic Barbieri when he converted, when he became a Catholic. And I just mentioned this because we see with all the deep wounds in our culture, you know, people are going to counseling. Like it's, oh, yeah. It's this new booming industry. And so there's these deep wounds that people are recognizing and trying to get at. But because we don't have this holistic vision of the human person, we can't uh, identify the problems and we can't give them solutions. So there's so many gateways. Like, you're right. There's so much evil at the same time. God can work through anything. God can bring good out of anything. And so it's learning to see these opportunities, right? Like any good salesman, right? Any brilliant you know, person. I, I know there's someone close to you that's a big brain, you know, salesman kind of thing, right? Uh, I don't know who, uh, no, but um, it's those opportunities, right? That's that's the joy of, you know, journeying with people and evangelizing too, and also uh, strengthening brothers and sisters in the faith, right? Um, both both elements is seeing those opportunities, and one of them is confession, right? It, it sounds funny, but I remember going to a conference, and there was a bunch of people, and they were asking this priest about confession, and they were asking the psy- um, psychologist, and there was also a psychiatrist uh, talking to them about counseling and all these things, and Yes, there's a genuine need for um, those, you know, natural services um, and for good Catholic psychiatrists and psychologists at certain times. But um, they were also saying that about 90%, and this was their words, not mine, right? So it could be inaccurate, but 90% of the things can be dealt with by uh, priests and confession or exorcists, which is amazing. That's very good, right? Or simple things like, you know, change your diet, right? Eat healthy, exercise, and go to bed, right? So that's wonderful. Like that's really good. So lots of the things in our culture, if we can evangelize or even bring people back to confession, that's a huge step forward, right? That's huge because people need to be heard. They need to be listened to. We haven't we've we haven't done that. We've like brainwashed people with media, and that's why we're reacting with all these subcultures and all this disregard for the big mainstream stuff. We're rebelling because we don't want to hear other people's garbage anymore. You want new things that identify with our voices, you know, anything that's unique and local and alternative, like our podcast, right? People are going to be listening to it because it's not, it's not CNN, right? It's not, it's not ideological. It's relatable. So I think that listening and then, you know, bringing people to confession. Um, what were the other things you had been saying though? Because there was more to this. Uh, well, my, my initial question, is that what you're referring to? Yes. Well, I think it was just, it, it was regarding just as grace can build upon nature. So too, I think, can uh, Satan work to destroy the foundation that grace lays for us and, yeah. and build his own? Well, that, that was the other thing, too. It's because Satan will just try to pervert our nature, but at the same time, it's still there, right? Um, like, we still have, no matter what, no matter how broken the human person can be, how much they can experience hell, 
they can still desire love. They'll still want to be loved and to love no matter what. This is so fundamental. This is the whole reason why we exist. Created out of love by loving God to love, right? Like that's that's huge. And so when that's also expressed in, you know, let's say um, th- through Eros love, right? And we see that with our culture, this fixation on and perversion of it with the demonic, all sorts of, you know, uh, sexual lust demons out there. The beauty is that people love beauty. They love joy. They love, they love sex. But that's the opportunity. That's the window. It's chastity is the new tool for evangelization. That's why I'm always on about Jason Everett. You know, if he wasn't, if he was good, but not that good, I wouldn't be beating it, you know, through the microphone all the time. But because this is, and this is, you guys challenged me on this point. This is my personal thought here, right? I actually think that this is the gateway into the Zoomer culture. <laughs> I think to evangelize and also to re-strengthen Catholics, right? And to bring people back. I think it's through talking about love because lots of people, they don't want to talk about politics, right? It's, it's so hotly contested. Sometimes people are very close-minded. Religion, the same thing. People are very indifferent or they believe in syncretism. It's all one, it's all the same, yada, 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 right? Um, there's so many things that people don't want to have these hard discussions on. It's just too tense. But everyone will talk about sex, Everyone will talk about love and relationships and, and your sexual identity and all these sorts of things, right? Everyone is open. Even if there's controversy there too, it's still something that's not been closed off. Free speech is always still there. People have this fixation. We have pride parades and all these sorts of things and we have pornography, but it's because we're so fixated with it, but that's also the opportunity. It's You can talk about it. You can win people over and say, look, you're longing for love. You're so broken. You're so addicted and you know it. You feel like you're a slave. Let me give you hope. I was talking to a friend the other day, actually, had like hours long conversation. It was amazing. And she opened up about all these things. And it was wonderful to once again reinstill this hope in her and tell her, look, you don't deserve these trashy guys. You deserve better, right? You're a child of God. You should be loved. These are things that you deserve, that you owe to yourself to the fight for. And she was so moved because I said, look, you can't have a a bunch of guys around you that are pornography addicts. Mm. They're going to treat you like shit. And then you're going to feel like it, too. You need to be loved. You need to experience good relationships, good friendships, chaste relationships, pure. And then we need to exemplify through our families good marriages. Because, you know, when more than half your friends are from broken, divorced families, what do they have to imitate? What are they looking at? What are their exemplars, right? So these sorts of things, if people want to talk about these things, they're open to hearing about it. And if you can do it the right way, if you can present it as something joyful and life-giving, something freeing from all these slaveries and brokenness, Oh man, people are so responding. That's why millions of people are listening to Jason Everett's stuff. Millions of people are actually open to the church's teachings on sexuality now because the fruits of all these efforts are, are now coming about. We're actually spreading the gospel through talking about theology of the body. Mm. But, but we're not making it abstract too much and we're not making it too cheesy and we're not being Puritans and we're not being gluttons like the culture. We're having that perfect holistic Catholic vision of sex is good within the context of marriage and guess what? This is something joyful and exciting and passionate. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the love you deserve and how to love properly. All these wonderful things that people are like, yes, yes, finally, something refreshing, something new, something that's not dark and grungy and dirty right. and, and feels like, ah, uh, you know, and then you f- wake up and you regret everything, you know? This is something that's like, wow. It's tough and challenging. It's a cross. And at the end of it, <sighs> that resurrection, there is life. This is life giving. It's like, yes, yes. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I wouldn't necessarily say that many people are open to it. Like I, I, I think, I think we're talking about about sexuality, especially in in the culture when 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 sexuality is such a kind of taboo and odd topic. But at the same time, we're also everybody's so obsessed with it. It's it it, it seems like there's kind of a. a, a a barrier to jump over. So I, I do agree with you, Alfonso, in saying that like once you get across to people and, and they kind of get the point and see all the different connections, it's a beautiful thing. You know, you, your eyes are opened, you know, you see the value in it. But we're still kind of in an age where, I mean, I guess you could, you could argue that we've always been in an age since, um, I mean, even since like the Protestant Reformation, where most of these splits, most of these con- um, problems amongst the faithful kind of come from sex in the sense that that it's always this desire to have control over yourself rather than like you know who's to say that that like I can't have sex or that I can't do this one thing I'm gonna go branch off and do and and, and have mm. my own church 
or I'm going to like, who, who says that I can't get divorced? I'm going to build my own church at King Henry the eighth. Right. And, and like, you know, and, 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 you know, go off. So I think there's that barrier there that we kind of have to try to, you know, squeeze through and, 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 and show to people, you know, yeah, this, this is a beautiful thing. And this, this is a, is a truthful thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do well, you think, Gabe? I, a part like part of me is inclined to agree with Alfonso. I do think that the desire is there, but I think it's a lot more implicit. Um, I think that internally people are longing for something more. I think that there's only so long that one can continue to consume and sort of cultivate these addictive habits that will do nothing but destroy you um, the more you indulge in them. I think that the longer uh, the longer that you indulge in things like that, the more of yourself that you lose, right? The further from God, the further from properly uh, love, loving and being loved you become. And so I think uh, that that the, the the more trapped you are in that sort of lifestyle, then the the greater the longing, the greater the greater the desire for that good becomes. And so I think just looking at our culture today, how how degenerate things have become. We look at what our culture glorifies. Again, things like uh, porn stars and things like, you know, congratulating people for taking advantage of, of women and things like that. It just shows how attached to this vice. And and what was it? Uh, I can't remember where in the Bible this was, but when Christ was talking about how sins of the flesh are like the easiest to fall into, just because they're they're so natural. It seems like such a natural thing to want to engage in. Um, and so I think, I think because it's so natural and because it's one of the easiest things to fall into, I think that's where Satan's working at the most. So too, looking at King Henry VIII, very influential. A lot of, there, there were great ramifications from what he did. And it all came from not, or, or even what, I can't remember where we were talking about this in class, but with Martin Luther, and he apparently wasn't a very chaste he yeah he, str- was, he's, he struggled with 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 temptations of the flesh and, right and um, yeah yeah and so it's just interesting to see um, how how much that that can be because it's such a powerful thing because there's so many passions linked to it it can uh, just as great as it can be in in terms of constructing great relationships with people or a family as Alfonso was talking about like you, you, my cup runneth over your children being that overflow so too can it be used in a destructive manner. So, to, so too can it uh, sort of disintegrate family life, and then when you when when you disintegrate family life enough, what happens? It, it's an affront to society, you know. Once when when you have families not functioning properly, society falls. Or when when even talking about what Alfonso was saying, you don't learn. You you can only learn um, skills from 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 people teaching them to you. And so if they don't have if they don't have the proper skills to offer, what are you going to learn? So too with like the absence of fathers in the household. Well, I think daughters oftentimes like the John Mayer song, you know, fathers be good to your daughters. Like oftentimes I think women learn how to be loved from witnessing how their father loves their mother. Yeah. yeah. So too do okay. sons learn how to love based off of how their father loves their mother, you know? And so when you remove that element and when you're just around your, your buddies who are like, just, you know, you, you, you just, engaging in all of this promiscuity and, and things like that that's what you learn and that's what you pass down to your your children should you decide to stick yeah. with them which is oftentimes not the case but when you do it's 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 it just becomes so ingrained yeah and how 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 funny is that 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 satan attacks fatherhood and, and attacks the image of the father and i think it, it it works so well with like the name of our podcast you know saint joseph you know for the longest time saint joseph wasn't really recognized as this, as, as the saint he is today, you know, he was always like, yeah, you know, he's, 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 he's the quiet, the foster father, you know, he took care of Christ, but you know, and, and I mean, rightfully still, but we give, we give our lady, you know, the praise, the honor and, and, and everything. But nowadays you see that, that St. Joseph, he's, he's kind of been brought out recently as, as, as you know, the, the, the saint that he is, right. And, the protector, the protector. Of the and it's, and it's funny the that pinnacle of masculinity. And it's funny that yeah. throughout, throughout society, you kind of see these little, um, well, I mean, throughout, throughout society before, before now, where it was like St. Joseph was kind of in the background and, and it's, it, it's almost as if, as if Satan wanted 
Saint Joseph to not be noticed and not be seen as as this great patriarchal okay. figure. And and kind of, I know we're we're kind of wrapping up right about an hour now. Um, but in in the in the consecration of Saint Joseph book, I just wanted to end to bring up this point. But even like in art, you know, Saint Joseph is always depicted as this old man and this 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 right. this this older figure. I don't know, maybe it symbolizes his wisdom. Maybe it symbolizes his knowledge. I, like it, it, it could. I don't, I don't really know too 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 much on why that is. But just how cool it is, the image of a young Saint Joseph. Imagine like 20, 25, 30, You know, powerful, youthful, able to protect, able to protect, but chase. You know, temperate, silent, had all these great qualities, and we see him now, mm. and, and, and exist, and we have him exist as that. You know that that saint that that follows Our Lady in the hierarchy of of saints as as a right, but still remains the head of the household and still leads his family. Yeah, and I think yeah, it, I think it's I, I just as Satan tries to pervert these types of things, tries to sweep Saint Joseph under the rug. Well, a, a hundred, a hundred or so years ago, even when 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 his role was more silenced, we see that family life was a lot. I I I think anyway. Again, I wasn't experiencing it, but it seemed a lot fuller than it is now. In that the role of the father was a lot more defined. You know, he remained at the head of the household, and in regards to like the domestic church, he remained that sort of priestly figure. And so now, as we see that that being disintegrated, why has why has Saint Joseph increased in popularity? Well, because we need it now more than ever. We see that it's such a, we see the void. Yeah. You know, and now people are looking to something, so ma- someone so magnificent that can fill it. You know, the perfect role model, I think, for, for men to look look at how, how can we lead our families properly. Yeah. And, and that's that's who you look to, I feel like. And so. how good is this year? You know? Yeah. You're a St. Joseph. Right. Right. Yeah. What do you think, Alfonso? What do you think about that before we wrap up here? <sighs> Well, I, I also want to re- rebuttal an earlier point, but no. Oh, yeah, no, no, go for it. Go I for think it. it is beautiful. I think, you know, learning from St. Joseph, growing this devotion, especially in this year, is perfect. That's why a map you guys recommended, you know, having St. Joseph's name as part of the podcast, making him the patron saint, um, an amazing you know, model of masculinity, of being faithful to God. So thanks, Conrad and Gabe, for that. It was awesome. And hopefully we can keep praying and learning from him. Because, yeah, I've read some books and so beautiful. And we have a friend of ours that's always on about St. Joseph and yeah, St. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to that guy. The friend of ours. <laughs> that friend of ours. Who we still knows, keep anonymous. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I know, so this is good. Like, I like the challenges, right? Especially when you say there is a hurdle um, when it comes to, you know, evangelizing and to uh, confirming, you know, as in strengthening brothers and sisters, especially on masculinity in the area of sexuality, because we need that. We need to constantly challenge. Um, but at the same time, I think when you look at the longings of the human heart and you see how people express it in culture, I think that's, once again, a beautiful sight because then you see, okay, things will be perverted, right? But uh, let's say the show The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolute filth, trash. Okay, for those that like it, rest in peace. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but... And, you know, maybe someone could challenge you on that, too. I don't mind, right? But I think at the same time, Not it, me. it's a good expression that, you know what? Instead of just showing straight pornography on television, um, people are longing for <laughs> general, general shows that deal with love and relationships. Right. And the drama of caring for another person, right? There's that so that longing expressed in the shows. They know that like that's far more effective, right? Right. For, for marketing. And it's just something that people long for more, right? Mm. They long for more substance, right? Um, but also... The fact that so many fathers are missing, like you guys were talking about, you learn from your father. Women learn how to be loved from their father, and sons learn how to love their mother and you know sisters, and then you know other women through their father. Because of the lack of fathers, we see though that no one in the culture says, at least for them. Okay, sorry, let me change that. Most people in the culture will still admit, even though there's some extremists and whack jobs, most people will still admit. <laughs> that the lack of fatherhood is a serious problem. Right. Especially in particular communities that are disadvantaged, right? And we see that emphasis saying certain ethnic communities are disadvantaged. We need to strengthen fathers in those communities. Mm-hmm. But overall, everyone so says that fathers are huge, are very important. Right. So they're missing. So that's a good that's a good point though. We can teach men that this is something honorable, something that is a wound that everyone can connect with, right? And also too, you look at uh, no one says divorce is amazing. 
even people that are like we should have divorce no one's like yeah divorce everyone divorce no <laughs> like everyone's like it's so sad it's such such a tragedy so fidelity when you emphasize fidelity saying you don't have to get divorced there should be no reason to divorce right get people to realize how important marriage is as a sacrament and that idea of lifelong total gift of self is so radical and countercultural. Yes, it will be challenging to some, but it's so exciting because women want to be loved. They don't want to be thrown away when they're 50-something. Right. They want to be valued up until the day they die or their right, husband dies. Right, right. They want to be loved. And men too, they don't want to just have to go from toy to toy, even though it's easier sometimes. And there's that fear. If you can overcome these things, people are going to be more receptive. But And here's the other thing too. Pornography for the most part, once again, there's extremists, but for the most part, you talk about pornography, let's say it's at a family dinner, right? Maybe not the best time, okay? <laughs> but, but either you will have heads of shame bow down for those that may be struggling or those that think it's okay but they're you know severely addicted, but it's shame. Everyone will either have shame or they'll be like, okay, well, what are you trying to say? Right? No one's going to be like, oh, yeah, pornography is the best, all what's wrong. Like, most people are going to be shamed and they're going to be a lot less... Versus on other right. things, people right. get yeah. fired up. But everyone in their heart of hearts knows. I've yet to meet someone who advocates for it. Yeah. You know, this is the greatest that, thing. That, I mean, that's what came to my mind when you're saying people love to talk about sex and pornography. <laughs> no, no. But, uh, no, but that's what I mean. It's like uh, most people, you know, they are a lot more open in the sense of the discussion. It's not going to be as, you're not going to have this visceral response. Uh -huh. It's mm. not going to be as like, oh, abortion, uh, you know, or like uh, Democrats versus Republicans. Oh, uh, everyone gets like fired up, right? They have such prejudices. But this, it, it's because it's so deep. It's touching the depths of the human heart. People, it's like they have an examination of conscience. As soon as you say some of these trigger words, it's not, ah, uh, but it's look inside yourself, especially on the area of, you know, pornography, right? So that's another thing I say, or you look at these shows like Say Yes to the Dress. Women still want to get married. You know, people still dream of weddings. The Greatest Showman. It. You know, I just watched that for the first time actually the other day, and I don't know if you guys have seen The Greatest Showman. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was fascinating was I thought in one part I thought the circus could have been it could be interpreted as kind of pro pride parade kind of thing, right? Assortment of characters that you know there's like the woman with the beard, and that's one interpretation possible. But one thing I was happily surprised about is that there was an emphasis on the family from the beginning. Like it was so much about family. Like the, the main character, you know, uh, whatever, Bartman or Bertman, the circus master, family, 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 loving his daughters, loving his wife, and they emphasize being faithful to your wife and providing for protecting her, all these sorts of things. It was like, whoa, this is like modern culture. They're still emphasizing that. It's still speaking to people. That's impressive. That's They know. They're marketing. They're smart. They know how to make money. They're not going to throw out ideological stuff unless they're certain that it's going to work. But when they're emphasizing family, you're like, hmm, interesting, right? Or within the politics, families are still used. Politicians still talk about their families. Right. No one's like, oh, I'm up here cheating on my wife. Look how great a politician <laughs> I am. Everyone's like, you're you're a sleazebag, right? Right. But if they're like, I'm a family man, everyone's like, yes, I want to vote for you, you know? Huh. So it's interesting. Or look at hashtag Me Too was great because it was all about, you don't treat women like that. And people want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Let's open up about our wounds. So everyone started talking about it. And everyone talked about consent. You should not rape people, which sounds very basic. And yes, it is. But there was a discussion about how to treat women. And it went yeah. from consent to love. And then people were saying, you know what? Okay, because there's all the sex, maybe if you get into like relationships that are a bit more stable with one person, it prevents some of these things. And people are like, oh, that's a great idea. That's a really good idea. And they're like, and if you make it like last a long, long time, you're a lot safer and stabler. And they're like, oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And they're like, if you make promises to each other that you say you'll never like hurt each other and be faithful always and like share everything, like, you know, it'll protect you even more. And people are like, brilliant 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 and then write this people, down write this down yeah and then someone was like sounds like you're talking about marriage and people were like oh and it was like my like you know like we try to reinvent the circles or the, the wheel sometimes right and you're just like wow we keep coming around to these things these fundamental truths that we know and we have to like get so broken rebel like a stupid teenager and then come back to our holy mother church and say mom you were right dad you were right my bad i'm an idiot i'm the prodigal son take me home right mm. Uh, but it keeps going. You look at Kanye West. He got famous off his sex tape with Kim Kardashian, right? Once again, it shows what we value as a no, culture. I don't think that was... Oh, oh sorry. Was, she got famous right, off of yeah. that. He was already famous as a rapper, right? But it did increase their publicity even so for both of them, right? But then, look at him now. He's had the St. Augustine moment. You know, we don't... I can't speak to how genuine it is, but he's become an icon for cultural conversion 
uh, to Christianity. Right, yeah. Very powerful. The new St. Augustine, one could argue, right? Just as I would say Dr. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> no, I, I'd say he's not You Catholic. could argue you, that. You could argue that. No, you like, might Catholic, lose the argument. Right? But I mean, like, Dr. Jordan Peterson, I would say, is like a modern-day Aristotle. He's laying down the groundwork of reason for the church to re-evangelize after. And Kanye West, in the sense, is he's like a proto-St. Augustine in the sense of he is... You know, the idea of a great cultural icon that was so degenerate, demonic worship, sex, finally found God, converted, and that was just explaining that on a great yeah, level to millions yeah. of people. And yeah, exclusively. Like, that's, that's mm-hmm. like, he's not going to say, I mean, I don't know. Like, no fidelity I, in, to Kim, too. He's talked about how he doesn't want his wife being like a hoe and dressing modestly, and he's talked about how yeah. he loves her, and he's, his struggles with pornography came out about right and how it's so it messed him up so much. Where, yeah, so yeah and, and, and I remember when that, when that happened last year, just you, you, you saw just the difference in his character right like i'm not a big kanye west fan but i remember i remember i was i was pretty excited when when his 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 last album drops like oh this is this is something new eh? this mm. is this this guy who went off talking about pornography talking about sex and like songs and now he's he's devoting himself to talking about god going against the status quo the culture and and you know promoting this this more or less pure lifestyle of you know being loyal and 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 praising god and, and it gets better, too, with the culture, too. Like, not even with Kanye, right? But you talked about Hollywood and music industry, all these wicked things. Look at this, the Pizzagate scandal. That right. was huge. But people were furious because it was genuinely evil, right? Now, if how true things are or not, the fact that people reacted viscerally because they recognized evil was a good sign, right? You don't want slander. You don't want tarnish. You want the truth to come out for all things, right? But... I'm 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 not going to comment any further on this, right? I don't want to end up dead because of the Democrats, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhat kidding, somewhat not. But no, seriously, the fact that people have a visceral reaction to pedophilia still, to be children being taken advantage of, that's a very good sign, right? Or um, love songs, right? Love songs. Our culture still has love songs so much, and you listen to the lyrics and you say, oh, what speaks to more people, right? It's talking about loving someone forever, always being there, right? Mm. And it hurts when people break up. It hurts when people are unfaithful. So these are very common things that you can still talk to people. Everyone will want to talk about their breakup. Everyone will talk, want to talk about, you know, the person they loved or the, the person they're going to love or all sorts of things, right? And once again, Pornhub was attacked with a lawsuit because of all the child pornography. And they had mm. to take down millions of videos. Thanks be to God for that, right? And hopefully Pornhub and all the porn industry will be destroyed because of their wickedness, right? May God smite them all mm. because it's so evil. Like, save every soul you can. May those people, everyone that's a victim of pornography be healed by God's grace and come back and live a good life and may the industry die a very violent death because it's so wicked. And the fact that children had to be abused for people to wake up and politicians right. to step in. But there's a good sign. Thanks be to God. There we go. There's another thing. And it's still going. There's lawsuits against Pornhub and other indus- uh, industry leaders once again. So these are good signs, right? politicians, cultural icons, the average everyday Joe, people are aware of these things. They still have these hungerings in their heart. It's expressed in our music and our literature. There's still a cultural tension and fight because you can only pervert human nature so much. But to be loved and, and to love is just, it's so fundamental. That's what I mean in that there's still always th- that part that we can tap into. And it's us learning the languages of each person to understand how to speak to them. I think that's that's the barrier. That's the obstacle. It's how stupid are we, you know? <laughs> like each of us, like Catholics, we're bad for this. We need to step up. We need to reach out to our fallen away brethren and to those that aren't of the faith and evangelize better. We need to have more compassion, use more wisdom from God, and understand each human person better. Learn their languages so we can speak to people. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what that's what the church has been emphasizing the past couple of decades. And I know what you guys think, but I think there's so much fertile ground. Um, it's interesting to hear what you're saying, and I know we're, we got to wrap up soon, but um how people respond how people respond to those types of sins because it's a sin against our own nature it's it's um elevated in terms of how egregious it truly is and i think that it's i'm, I'm definitely like i agree with you i'm glad that it's there is still that gut reaction that this is so wrong um and i think that maybe it is a sign of progress that people are reacting that way maybe it is going to be an, a wake-up call that yeah we we have degenerated this far Maybe things aren't as, as 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 they seem in every respect, but yeah, that's about that's about all I've, I've got for. No, and this is all part of the journey of, like you said before, masculinity, femininity, mm. the beauty of human love, of family, connecting back to the land, God's creation, what it means to be Catholic. All these things we need to, you know, talk about again and and fall in love with, fall in love with love, 
love true love love authentic love because porn kills love you know yeah conrad's always flexing those stickers right what's the what's the company again that uh, fight it? the new drug yeah anyway i think um unless there's anything else that we should add we, we're probably going to wrap up so i think we'll we'll close off in a prayer in the, name of the father son and holy spirit amen all glory be to you father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen saint joseph pray for us and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, thanks for joining us, everybody, and uh, we'll see you hopefully next week for our fifth episode. All right, God bless everybody. All right. Say that you're lost on your family for ages. Killed 15 chairs just to get your attention.